I've decided to break up with an old woman like you and marry this younger woman. My husband, who is in his 40s, holds the shoulder of our managing director's daughter, who is in her 20s, and looks at me with a triumphant expression on his face. I thought I had done my best to support him at home and at work, and we had been getting along well. Old lady, please step aside. I was called an old lady by the two of them, and I felt a surge of anger and bitterness, nearly bringing tears to my eyes. While I had been working hard, my husband was having an affair. Moreover, the two of them had a powerful supporter in the executive. I gave up and went back home. A few hours later, I received a message from my husband. Oh, hey, you. You are the chairman's. He contacted me in a fluster. Well, you finally realized? I'm Anna, 35 years old. I have been supporting my husband Eddie as a part time housewife. We met at work, and I was drawn to his sincere dedication to his job, which eventually led to our marriage. I thought about becoming a full time housewife after marriage. But since I was originally working as an administrative employee supporting my husband, who was in sales in the same department, it felt somewhat lonely to suddenly reduce my work to zero. I wanted to contribute to my husband's effort as much as possible while balancing household responsibilities, so I decided to remain at the company as a part time employee for about five hours a day. Even though it's just five hours, there's a lot to do. Including office cleaning in the morning, customer interactions, and creating materials for sales. My husband has a strong track record in the company, and there were even rumors that we were an ideal work partnership before being a married couple, beyond just being husband and wife. It's all thanks to your support, Anna. Thank you as always. I'm glad, but you're the one who is excelling in the spotlight. My work was not very visible, but it was worthwhile just to be appreciated by my husband. One day, my husband was promoted to section manager for his sales performance. While his department didn't change, his role shifted to include not just sales, but also being a team leader, which meant I couldn't support him as closely. It's a bit lonely, but it means Eddie's talent is being recognized, right? I felt like my husband had become somewhat distant, but it's true that I was happy for him, as if it were about myself. I said to my husband, Congratulations! You will have to work even harder from now on. He responded with a beaming face, Anna, thank you. I will be counting on you from now on. He said something like that. If we have children in the near future, being a stay at home mom might be a good option. With my husband's promotion, I started to consider such things. I will be counting on you from now on. My husband said while looking directly into my eyes. However, the peaceful daily routine began to change due to the arrival of a certain woman. One day, an introduction was made about a new employee who had joined the company as a mid career hire. She was hired as a regular employee and was said to be in the same administrative role as me. Around me, there were whispers of she's a managing director's daughter. It's a nepotistic hire. Oh, she's a managing director's daughter. I'm Kathy. Nice to meet you. The woman named Kathy, who introduced herself, gave off an easygoing vibe, for better or for worse. Rather than appearing particularly serious. Nice to meet you. Are you Anna? She approached me with a smile. It seems that I was designated to teach her the administrative tasks. Kathy, nice to meet you. I've been around here as a veteran employee, so feel free to ask if you have any questions. I returned the greeting, but in the next moment, she uttered words that left me astonished. What? The person supposed to teach me is just a part time old lady? What a shame! What's with this girl? Her attitude was so shocking 
that I was at a loss for words. Oh, please don't be too strict with me. My father is a managing director, so I can tell him any time, you know. She speaks jokingly, but her eyes were not smiling. Despite her demeanor, she was hired as an administrative employee, so I had to teach her the basics. I had a feeling it wouldn't go smoothly, but I prepared myself to deal with her. This is a coffee for the customers. Use this cup. Are you even listening? Despite my explanation, she casually responded while looking at her nails. Yeah, and I don't want to make coffee. I'm not here to do odd jobs. She laughed as if mocking both the job and me, and her attitude remained consistently dismissive. No matter what I tried to teach her, she didn't listen to me and had a rebellious attitude. But for some reason, she used a sweet voice and approached my husband Eddie. Eddie, how about some coffee? Why won't she make coffee for the customers, but is willing to make it for Eddie? I couldn't get into the right mood due to her carefree behavior. Just seeing Eddie, who was talking with a smile, made me feel somewhat uneasy. If Eddie is so focused on work, he wouldn't pay attention to her. I decided to trust my husband, despite my anxiety. Besides, if I were to reprimand her more than necessary, it would only drain my energy. So I decided to hold off on saying anything. Kathy had been with the company for a few weeks, and today was the day when a major client representative was coming to the office. As I was preparing coffee, Kathy suddenly intervened. She had never shown any interest in preparing for visitors before. I wondered what had caused this sudden change in behavior. Huh? I'm just serving coffee. Will you do it? I asked instinctively. It's better to have a young and cute girl handle important clients, she confidently replied. She sure likes to call herself cute. I left her to her own devices to see what would happen, but her movements were quite unstable. I was on the verge of offering help, but I can do it on my own. Old lady, stay quiet. I was told, it's just serving coffee, so it should be fine. I had been watching her while trying to convince myself that everything would be fine, but the result was a failure. The coffee that Kathy carried slipped slowly off the tray and spilled onto the client's suit. There was chaos in the office. I felt like that moment was in slow motion. And then, Kathy exclaimed, Oh, oh no! Her exclamation brought me back to reality. As I hurried to clean up, she said, Oh no, I'm so sorry! She apologized by laughing. She did utter an apology, but it was clear she was joking, and it seems like she believed her use would excuse her behavior, despite the desperate attempts of the co-workers around her to apologize. It seems the clients were quite upset and didn't appreciate it. Cut the nonsense! The client said this and left. Oh, today was a real mess. On the way back home, I recalled the day's events and felt down. I regretted not taking charge no matter what. The day after this failure, when I arrived at work with a heavy heart, I was summoned by the managing director Kelvin. Oh, am I going to be scolded again? I entered the office of managing director Kelvin worried that maybe he would reprimand me for the lack of guidance regarding yesterday's incident. To my surprise, I found not only Kathy, but also my husband Eddie in the room. Anna, it seems you were quite disrespectful to an important client yesterday. He wasted no time and immediately spoke with a stern expression as soon as I entered the room. I'm so sorry. My guidance was lacking. Guidance? Are you trying to shift the blame onto my daughter like that? It seems that despite spilling coffee, your apology was lacking in sincerity. Apparently, there is a discrepancy between what the executive director is telling me and what I remember happening. No, well, yesterday. I had intended to counter his words, irritated by the way he seems to be defending his daughter. 
However, Calvin interrupted me. Your attempts at making excuses were embarrassing. Your husband Eddie witnessed the blunder too. He continued to press the issue. Huh? Why did Eddie? I couldn't fathom why he was siding with Kathy, so I shifted my gaze toward my husband. However, he avoided making any eye contact with me. There is no escaping it now. You were originally a part timer, so you don't need to come in anymore. You are fired. What? Fired? For a moment, I was lost in thought, not understanding what the managing director meant. Why am I the one taking the blame for Kathy's mistake? It finally dawned on me. Kathy, being the managing director's daughter, had pulled my husband onto her side and shifted the blame for yesterday's blunder onto me. I've been outsmarted by this schemer. My anger was not only directed at Kathy, but also at my husband. However, there is more to the reason for my husband's presence. And could you also fill this out? After delivering the termination notice, I looked at the document handed to me, and it turned out to be a divorce paper. Upon closer inspection, my husband Eddie's part had already been filled out. These two were having an affair. I felt a mix of anger and sadness. My husband and Kathy were looking pleased, making eye contact and sharing laughter. I see, understood. I managed to hold back tears of frustration and sign the document. That's when my husband said, I've decided to divorce someone like you, and I'm going to marry Kathy. Too bad for you. He callously threw these words at me, accused of a crime I didn't commit, losing my job, and discovering my husband's infidelity. It was a devastating revelation. The managing director and his daughter abused their authority to push me into a corner. I will never forgive them. I need to get back at them tenfold. I vowed for revenge and handed over the divorce papers resigning. I returned to the home I shared with my husband, but I couldn't live here anymore. I started packing my things. As I silently prepared, the outside had grown dim, and it was already evening. Suddenly, my smartphone rang. It was a call from my husband. What's this all of a sudden? With a bewildered feeling, I answered the phone, and immediately, Hey, Anna! Is it true you are the chairman's granddaughter? I heard a panicked voice. Yes, but what about it? In fact, the chairman of the company where my husband and I work is my grandfather. I never thought it was necessary to mention this in my work, so I hadn't told anyone. However, my husband seems to have just realized it. When I asked for the details, Actually, today, after you came back, the chairman made a surprise visit to the company. He began to explain. It appears that the chairman visited the company unannounced and it happened to be precisely the time when I was summoned to the managing director's office. I returned home immediately after being informed of my resignation, so I had no idea about this. When the chairman arrived, both the managing director and Kathy were still present. The managing director hurriedly approached to introduce his daughter to the chairman. Chairman? Hello! Nice to meet you! Kathy began greeting the chairman in a useful manner, and the chairman was briefly surprised, but he replied with, Nice to meet you. It seemed fine up to that point. While the executive and Kathy were buttering up to the chairman, the chairman apparently turned to my husband and inquired about me. Eddie, how's married life with my granddaughter? I heard she was working part-time, but it seems not. Huh? My granddaughter, do you mean Anna? At that moment, things took an unexpected turn. Granddaughter, Eddie, is your wife the chairman's granddaughter? Huh? But they said she was fired just a while ago. The managing director silenced Kathy to prevent her from saying more, and they decided to explain that I was on sick leave for the time being. So? 
Is that the end of the conversation? I could tell that my husband was anxious, but there was nothing more to say. It's a pity that he found out I'm the chairman's granddaughter after all the divorce and resignation drama. As I was about to hang up, my husband hastily said, I still have the divorce papers. Can you come back, please? I beg you. He initially tried to carry favor with the managing director's daughter, but since the chairman holds a higher position, he must have thought that being married to me would be more advantageous in terms of career advancement. It's clear that he's driven by personal gain and is attempting to exploit me. Aren't you ashamed? Just because I'm the chairman's granddaughter, you think we should continue as if nothing happened? I've already resigned, and we need to proceed with the divorce properly. Tell the chairman the truth yourself. Wait a minute! I haven't told the chairman yet! Despite my husband's fumbling attempts to speak, I ignore him and hung up the phone. The next day, I woke up in the home where I had spent the night as usual. My husband never returned. And today, there's one final thing I need to do. I've made up my mind and decided to head to the office. Oh, Anna, you did come after all. As soon as I arrived at the company, my husband rushed over with a smile. But I didn't have any business with this man. I didn't come to see you specifically. I was called by the chairman as I casually brushed him off. The chairman arrived at just the right moment. Anna, I heard you were absent yesterday. Are you feeling better now? That Eddie, he didn't tell the truth. I decided to inform the chairman, who had believed I was on sick leave about the events of the previous day. I was actually fired from here yesterday, and I'm getting a divorce from Eddie. He was having an affair with Kathy. Fired? Weren't you working as a part-timer? Suddenly, the managing director and my husband, who were told such things, rushed in and intervened between the surprised chairman and me. No, it's not like that. The divorce was just a mistake or... The managing director's daughter made advances. Well, you see, the thing is, my daughter still needs to gain more experience in society. Saying she's fired, it's just a figure of speech. No matter how much they tried to explain, it only made the situation worse. And they were already in deep water. What on earth is going on? What's happening? The chairman asked with a stern expression. I decided to have him listen to yesterday's conversation, which I had recorded just in case. Recording? When did you... When I played the recording, it became clear that they told me I was fired and it even made me sign the divorce papers. We don't need an old head like you. Naturally, this statement from my husband was also part of the recording. The chairman furrowed his brow and listened to the entire audio intently. As soon as he finished listening, he turned to me. So, you are currently unemployed, right? That's perfect. It saves us a transition time. He said this with a smiling face. When I asked the chairman what he meant, he explained that he is currently planning to start a new company in collaboration with another business. It seems that the other party wants to appoint their own son as a president, so we also need to select someone from our side for the position. I thought about having Eddie handle it, but with his abilities, it's probably impossible to accomplish the job. The chairman cast a scornful look at my husband. In response, Eddie said, Give me another chance. Anna and I haven't gone through with the divorce yet. This guy didn't have the courage to go through with the procedure. As I looked at him with a cold gaze, the managing director shouted, What did you say? Eddie, are you saying you won't marry my daughter? You proposed to me saying you like younger women. What's going on? Even Kathy, who had been silent until now, started making a scene. If I had known Anna was the chairman's granddaughter, 
I would have never considered someone like you. What with that attitude? I would never accept a lousy guy like you. The three, who had been cooperating and getting along as planned until yesterday, quickly turned against each other. The chairman took the divorce papers from my husband's hands while he was there. It seems it's already filled out. But what do you want, Anna? I took a deep breath and honestly expressed my feelings in one go. Of course, I was admitted. Just thinking about being married to a man like him makes me feel sick. Having an affair for a promotion is despicable. Wait, Anna! We were doing well at work, weren't we? Until you became a section chief, right? Were you planning to aim for the managing director position next? Extending your advances to younger colleagues? Why don't you marry Kathy and let her arrange everything for you? My husband was left speechless, biting his lip. So, what are you going to do, Anna? I've heard that the sales department's performance has been declining since you went from a full time employee to a part timer. Oh, well, that's. Even though you were an administrative worker, your support was significant, right? In fact, I heard that our department's performance declined because there was no one else capable of tasks like creating sales materials after I became a part timer. The managing director, who had wrongly fired me without recognizing my work as an administrative worker, bore a heavy responsibility. In part to atone for this mistake, the managing director was moved to the sales department to relearn the sales profession. Furthermore, the chairman made significant efforts to improve the company's internal environment. He emphasized that tasks such as customer service and cleaning should be carried out without distinction of gender. He even conducted discreet investigations to check if there were any employees displaying overbearing attitudes. As a result, Many of the managing director's wrongdoings came to light. The managing director had obtained his position by imposing his work on others and taking credit for their achievements without contributing his own efforts. There were many pieces of information like this from other employees, and it seems that no one helped with the work even after transferring to the sales department. As a result, the sales department's performance suffered. Similarly, my ex husband had to start over in the sales department as a regular employee. But the reason he had a good performance before was because I was supporting him. He lamented that there was no place for him in the company, as rumors about him were incessant, like the man who had an affair and attempted to exploit internal pressure for divorce. Kathy naturally didn't take her job seriously, and it's said she couldn't even handle simple tasks. And during a day full of scolding. I don't have to do this, she complained, but she could no longer use the title of the managing director's daughter. She was repeatedly criticized for her manners and language, leading to her resignation. I heard that the managing director and my ex husband also lost their place within the company and were pushed into voluntary retirement. On the other hand, after completing the divorce proceedings following the turmoil, I became a free woman. I also got involved in the launch of the new business that the chairman had mentioned and began dating the son of the other company's president. Of course, I demanded a substantial amount of alimony from my ex husband and the managing director's family. When you think about it, the managing director was actually supporting the affair between my ex husband and his own daughter. All three of them did something stupid, even if it was for their own positions. Sometime later, I had a child and got married. Unlike my ex husband, my current husband is a kind and nice man with a good job. He always takes care of me, and I feel like I finally have true happiness. For those who seek to attain social status by pushing others down, or believe it's all due to their own abilities, there might not be the bright future ahead. As for what happened to those three afterwards, I don't know, but I hope they continue to appreciate the support they received from those around them. Looking ahead, 
I will be busy with household and child care duties, but I intend to build a happy family with the cooperation of my husband.